Look at this huge map. We want this entire place to be densely packed with environmental art. Realistic terrain, detailed buildings, unique set dressing with very little reused assets. The only problem is there's just two of us. Hello. So we need to lean on procedural workflows to help speed up the creation and iteration process, but also giving us creative control. So I'm Jed and this is my brother Daniel, and we're trying to create a no compromise story video game set in the golden age of Hollywood. In order for us to finish this game, we got to make it all the way to the top of this mountain, and we're currently all the way down here. So the next step to get up this mountain is to focus on Buildings. Building buildings the way a builder would build buildings. The old B, 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 B. Yeah. Yes, sir. So let's get on to it. So we have a lot of creative goals for these buildings. Large surfaces without any visible repeating patterns. We want each building to be completely unique and every surface to have unique warping and micro detail to it. Complete freedom to place objects anywhere on a building, including windows without it snapping to a grid like a traditional modular system would have. We want it to feel as organic as possible. No straight lines. Everything in the real world has a little bit of curve or warp to it. Because we have so many buildings on this map, we want to have very fast iteration time. So that means in order to have fast iteration, we need to be able to create buildings from simple shapes, no texture work, and easy to update and change over time. So if you've watched previous episodes, you'll know that we're working on the vertical slice for our game. Right now we're working on Main Street, which is a perfect test area for us to make the buildings I made multiple concept art pieces, but one of them that helped is we wanted a little area, like a city street corner, that helped us show off all of the different elements that we want to achieve with the building tools we need to make. Okay, so let's go take a look at this in Unreal. This is a large surface without a noticeable repeating pattern. That's really important because in a lot of games, older games, you can just really tell if there's a brick texture, you can just tell the pattern immediately. What this is doing is it's varying the color of all the bricks, but then it's also doing these splashes of paint over the wall surface. If we get up here and look, see you can see all this cool detail from the painterly style. All the bricks have a different color to them. And if we go look at the vertex coloring, this is what it looks like. This blue is little paint splashes. There's actually an, an alpha channel on this too, which is more paint splashing. And then every brick, the, the red and greens, pull out different colors in the shader. And this was all done with Houdini. As we're generating this wall, we do some splashes, we do random brick colors. And so that makes it look unique doesn't make it feel repeating. The next thing is to have variation in the wall surface. Because we're using Nanite, and these are really high poly meshes, we can take, as an example, this brick wall, and we can, if we get like a shallow angle here, you can see every single brick has a slight little wiggle to it. We're, we're like rotating it a bit, we're, we're pushing um, it in and out and side to side a little bit, and that gives it this awesome, uneven warp view. If we go over here and look at this building, this is like a stone, kind of like a like maybe a limestone or something. This is maybe a little much, but literally every single one of these blocks actually has its own unique noise pattern on it. So we'll have to see if that's maybe a little too much. But, and this also has that exact same thing where every single one of these blocks is slightly moved, slightly warped. And if we go into a different lighting mode here, you can really see all the detail because it just isolates it. Hot dog. Okay, I wanna move this window. So for some reason or another, during development, we wanna move a window or do some sort of alteration. Here we go. So I can just go kablam and then bam. So that is like a really big deal during development, just be able to move something because there were so many times that you're making something and then for like a gameplay purpose or a story or something, you need to go back and do a lot of tweaking and that can eat up an enormous amount of times. So having the ability to just just haphazardly toss stuff around and it just works is amazing. So I can actually go in here and look at this window. So you can see it automatically cut everything out. It has like the, the proper alignment of the bricks here. All I had to do was just move this cube. And also really importantly is we're not bound to a grid. This isn't like a modular system where everything has to be kind of like snapped. Everything can kind of be a little 
you know, a little loose, very organic. This is maybe a better view of it. See how this, uh, this edge, just when this window is cut out, it, it automatically um, wraps the brick around the edge and lines it up perfectly. So, and that's just all free. It just does it automatically. We, we don't have to think about it. The next thing is we want everything to feel really organic. We don't want to have any straight lines. Everything needs to be almost as if it's like sculpted out of clay or something. Everything in real life is very imperfect. So you can see that really well over here where because of this wall being so warped, the shadow that's cast from this other building has this wave to it. And we can look over here at this wall, this curved surface you have here. Um, and then again, this is the, the exact same thing with, with this shadow over here. You can see all the beautiful imperfections of the building. All that stuff is all well and good. Doesn't mean anything if it takes forever to do. So we really, really want this to be like super quick, super fast to be able to make changes. And I will show you if I have this building here in Unreal, I can put this into like a preview mode, which is like a low resolution version of the building. And in this preview mode, I can take these objects, like these little cubes here, and I'll just like move this back to the front. Bam, it just moves. Maybe I wanna move it up, bam. This is very powerful where we can go in here and add new features, move things around really quick and dirty. And then once we're happy with that, then we can turn off the preview mode and it'll bake the high resolution version. So now let's say that you wanted to change this window to a different type of window. At the moment, all you have to do is go in here, select this cube, go in here and change this cube to a different material. And this new material tells the Houdini system, what asset to use. So now I could just hit recook real quick. Kablam, there you go. We've changed the window. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's see how quickly we can get a little building up and running here, uh, just to the left of our existing stuff here in this empty lot. Okay, there we go. This building was like super quick to make. Now the really cool thing is here, now that we have it, uh, it's very easy to, let's say we wanna add another window here. We'll just go ahead and put this back into preview real quick. Um, we'll duplicate this puppy. There we go. And also, let's say that we wanted this entire building to be a different material altogether. So we'll go back over to Blender really quick just change this material to the like the block that that limestone block bam there we go the whole thing is now the stone block even more what we could do um, I'll just grab this face and we'll say extrude on the Y pull them out here export it there we go uh, this is a real funky looking building but um, and just for kicks let's turn it back to brick we're gonna go brick messy, export it, there we go. Now she's brick, bam. Last thing we wanna show you is how this works in Houdini because Houdini is doing all the legwork. What we have here is, this is the whole network that generates the building. Now we can start up here. This is the input mesh, so this is what you'd make in Blender. Then, those little cubes that, that are in Unreal that you place, we take those and we spawn windows at those locations and we spawn what their like cutout geometry is. Then we can take the input mesh and we could subtract those window cutouts. So then you actually get the corner of the window where it's properly curved or cornered. The next step of the process is to take every single flat surface of this mesh and unwrap it. And when we unwrap it, we make sure to snap it to the grid of whatever material we're, we're using. So with like brick, we make sure to snap the edge and every single cutout to half a brick. If we actually look at the UVs of this object and we come down here to the window, you'll notice that it's actually slightly like warped. If you look at this brick and you follow it along, it's actually kind of like dipping down because we're taking the UVs and we're slightly scaling them down and slightly moving them over just a little bit so that they line up with the bricks properly. Then after that, we can go and we can actually generate the surface. So here's again, th this is our mesh that, that's properly UV unwrapped. And then these are actually the brick surfaces. We generate all those, they just say here. Then we can go over, we can warp 
this is where we, we apply the warping. So if we go through and give um, the, the, the input surface like a little bit of a, a wobble to it, then we can take that those surfaces that we generated and we can essentially like wrap it onto that input surface. So you can see down here, it's kind of hard to see, but it is, doesn't even have like the, the warping on there. It's hard to see with the lighting though. The last things we do, we go through, we give everything the, the random color that you saw. We just randomly select different bricks to be different colors. Uh, and this is in the vertex colors. Then we can give everything, we can go through the A and B channel of the vertex color. And this is where we add in those little splashes of color. The last thing is we just set some of the normals and then bam, we're all done. The other really awesome thing about this is Side Effects actually created a plugin for Unreal. All the things that we do in Houdini can actually be exported and imported as a tool that runs in real time in Unreal. So that's why I'm able to go in here and select this building and have all these different settings that are exposed from Unreal. So there you go. We're pretty happy with the building tools. We think it looks awesome. It's super fast um, to iterate on. So, uh... so now we can build buildings faster than a builder can build buildings. Like this video if you liked it. Thanks for watching and bye.